Do quantum particles violate the law of causality? Let's consider. Hello philosophers, I'm Chico. Welcome to The Philosopher's Show, where we consider the greatest questions of human history. Now, we've considered two forms of the law of causality. The first one, especially formulated by William Lane Craig in his version of the law of uh, the Kalam cosmological argument, goes like this. Everything that begins to exist requires a cause. The second one, used in the argument of change, formulated by Edward Fesser. No potential can be actualized unless something already actual actualizes it. Now, some philosophers and scientists claim that quantum mechanics shows us a counterexample to the law of causality. They claim that quantum field theories show that particles can come into existence and go out of existence, out of the quantum vacuum. And they say that that shows uh, a counterexample to the law of causality, that something is uh, coming in randomly, totally indeterminately, and without any cause. So it seems like there's, there's two problems here for the law of causality, the indeterminacy and the, that there's nothing there causing these things to come about. So let's consider the second one of those first. Uh, is it the case that these particles are coming out of absolutely nothing? The argument here is that, you know, they come from the quantum vacuum and the vacuum is nothing, therefore they're coming from nothing. Unfortunately, however, the word vacuum here is pretty misleading because this quantum vacuum is not nothing. It's not the absence of everything, right? This quantum vacuum is actually a sea of energy and different fluctuations in the energy cause these particles to come out and hear that word cause, right? So they cause these particles to come out. So um, it's not the case that there's nothing there. There's a sea of energy there, which is definitely not nothing and therefore we must have some kind of cause. And even if it's the case that uh, we can do away in our theory with a vacuum and we can just rest purely on physical laws and uh, somehow show that quanta could come out of existence, out of nothing, um, even then we would still have a problem because unless you hold the most austere regularity theory of, of causation or you totally reject the, the idea that all truths must be grounded in some way, then you're going to have to hold that these physical laws have some kind of hold in reality. You know, there must be something real that makes these physical laws true. And what do I mean by that? Well, imagine that um, there is, imagine this, this absurd scenario, right? There are non-existent creatures called Shmomraths. Now, these creatures have never existed before. They will never exist. They're not even created in anybody's mind. There's no platonic forms or ideas in the mind of God that uh, correspond to these Shmomraths. And yet, it's true that Shmomraths have small necks. Is that possible? Is it, can we really say that it's possible that something is true when there's just no reality whatsoever corresponding to it? That seems pretty crazy. Now, in the same respect, now imagine there is nothing, right? No thing exists. I don't mean empty space out there, you know, that, that is just waiting for something to pop into it. I mean, not even that. Nothing exists. And yet physical laws are true? What? No, something real has to exist in order to make those physical laws true. Right, and it, I'm not saying that it causes them to be true, but it grounds them in their truth. And so we ought, must already have something real in order for these uh, laws to be true. In a way we could say that there is some kind of causation already happening to bring these quanta into existence. So even if we can get rid of the vacuum, we haven't totally gotten rid of causation. A third problem with this is that quantum mechanics relies very, very heavily on mathematical equations. And the problem with relying so heavily on math is that math has nowhere in it, no room in it for capturing causation. These physical laws that depend so much on math don't have space for causation. So consider, for example, the formula force equals mass times acceleration. All right. Uh, and let's assume that you increase the force on something 
and you make the mass stay the same, what would happen? Well, the acceleration would also increase. Looking at that equation, you know, force increasing, acceleration's got to increase, right? But notice that nowhere in there does it say that the force causes the acceleration to increase. And yet we know that's the case. So what's the problem here? The physical law doesn't have the ability to capture that concept of causation, even though it's there. So we shouldn't expect to look to our physical laws and all of a sudden say, yeah, there's causation right there, even if causation is there. So another problem then, again, with this, with this uh, uh, idea is that we're looking at physical laws to deliver something that it just can't deliver. What about the other problem? The problem that these things are coming into existence indeterminately, right? With, with total randomness. Is that a problem for the law of causality? No, because there's nothing to say that there can't be indeterminate causation. So for example, um, EJ Lowe gives this uh, example. Imagine you have a bad guy who wants to bomb a building, but he only wants to bomb one building. There's two buildings out there and he's like, he loads them both up with bombs and he's like, I want to bomb one of these guys, but I'm not sure which one and I only want to bomb one. So he hooks up these wires to his detonator and he can't decide which one he wants. So he, uh, he hooks up a random number generator. And let's say that this random number generator is indeterminate, right? It, ahead of time, it is not determined what number it's going to come up with. He pushes down the, the trigger and then it goes through the random number uh, generator and blows up one of the buildings. Now, did he cause that building to blow up? Yes. Was it determined ahead of time that it was going to be that building? No. There was an indeterminacy of what was, what was going to happen, and yet there was still causation. So he caused it to happen, but he caused it to happen indeterminately. So just because there's an indeterminacy doesn't mean that there's not causation. It's also possible, by the way, that these things do not come into existence indeterminately. It's possible that there is some hidden variable that would cause them to be determinate that we just don't know. And this would not be implausible considering we're considering things on the quantum level. And this is at the very, you know, cusp of things that we can see. It's not wildly implausible that there would be things that are smaller than we can see and they might be causing some kind of in a determinacy that we just can't measure. And if you think that this is impossible at all, um, I can show you that this is at least logically possible by giving you a scenario from Alexander Proust. This isn't supposed to be a probable view of the world. It's just supposed to be a logically possible one to show you that it is uh, the hidden variable theory is possible, right? There, there could be some hidden variable theory, even if it's not this one. So imagine that the world is such that there is an indetectable absolute reference frame right? There's just like a grid out there in the world, a 3D grid. And at each point, we have what are called monads. And a monad is um, like a real entity that is at a point, you know, so it's not dimension, it doesn't have any dimensions to it. And it's its own thing. It's not connected to any of the other monads. And uh, it contains within it everything that's going to happen in that to that monad for its entire history. So it would contain a record of all the particles that would come to be and that would cease to be at that point for all time. And let's say that each monad causes the particles to come to be or to cease to be at that point. So it's determined ahead of time by that record it holds of what particles are gonna to come to exist and what particles are gonna to cease to exist, it causes those things to happen. It causes them to happen determinately then. Again, that is not a, uh, to say that, that I think that's actually true. That's just to say that it's possible that there is some hidden variable that we just don't see that um, could d explain how that the, these particles come into existence determinately, even though 
uh, they appear to us to be indeterminate. That's all for the objection from quantum mechanics to the law of causality. Uh, if you want to talk about anything, please hit me up in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.